So today we will look at um, DC current circuits. Um, please, if you if you have questions, ask. Um, now, electric current often okay. Electric current often denoted by I basically represents the rate of flow of charges basically represents the rate of flow of charges in other words i is equal to is defined as the limit of delta q divided by delta t as t turns to zero which is equal to dq all divided by dt where the average current I average is equal to the change the amount of charge divided by the time taken for the charge to go through the conductor now the second thing that it is important for you to keep note is that electric current is a fundamental quantity measured in amperes that means that one ampere is equivalent to one coulomb divided by one second in other words one coulomb which is a derived unit is equivalent to one ampere seconds now, remember that current, electric current I, has both a direction and a magnitude, so it is a vector quantity, but most often treated in textbooks like a scalar quantity, so you should know that subtle difference. But what is the direction of current? First of all, one, conventionally, I'll explain what I mean when I say conventionally, current is equal to the flow of positive charges. Current is the flow of positive charges. But this is not true in all the cases, but conventionally, to make the mathematics simplified, it's just a tradition for physicists and engineers. We do consider current to be the flow of positive charges. But we know that in metals, electric current is due to what? Electrons. You understand that, right? Electric current is due to electrons. Now, for charges to flow, what must exist? For charges to flow, what must exist? A potential. A potential difference. Now, Electrons which are negatively charged normally will move freely from a region of what low potential to a region of high potential, and on the contrary, positive charges um, f are free to move from a region of what high potential to a region of low potential. So the direction of current usually is from a high potential to a low potential. Like plus to minus on the battery? Yeah, exactly. To a low potential. Any questions? Now, let's define another common term, current density. Current density is denoted by G, which is also a vector. Let's say we have a conductor. Now, let's say the length of this conductor, let's call it delta X. Normally it's L, but let's call it delta X for a moment. Now we have charges 
remember we con we are considering that our current is made up of positive charges and these charges are moving in that direction so um, let's say that the drift velocity of the electrons or the charges is V subscript D now current density J is defined as di divided by da which implies that i is the intersurface integral this is um, of j not really the surface integral it's the integral of y j da um, you can put this as a dot product and this will be the aerial element um, but that is not so important for now it is the amount of current per unit area oh, okay. so J represents the amount of current per unit area J represents the amount of current per unit area now the unit the SI unit of J therefore is equal to what um, ampere divided by meter squared ampere divided by meter squared now pay attention to this let's suppose that each of these charge carriers carries a charge Q and there are end of them in that little conductor so we know that the total charge delta Q will be equal to remember that um, let me put it this way the number of N represents the number of charges let me write it out the number of charges charge carriers per unit volume that would mean that N will be equal to Q over V which is the same as Q area multiplied by Delta X this would mean um, let's let me start from this angle we know that Q is equal to N Q right because charge is conserved the, num the, the, the total amount of charge it's basically equal to N Q right but the question is what is N this is the total number of charge per unit volume mm-hmm big Q if you look at this definition the average current flowing through a given conductor is equal to the amount of charge passing through that conductor per unit time so basically delta Q is measured in coulombs yeah delta Q is measured in coulombs okay. mm -hmm. what is the small Q? now the small Q is the ch charge on each charge carrier mm. such as the charge on each electron we multiply that by the total number of charges per unit volume to get the total number of charges so um, that would mean if this is if n represents the number of charges per unit volume then um, we would have n equal to that will be delta q divided by um, the volume here is a delta x multiply by so this implies multiply by small q this implies that delta q is equal to n or q bracket n <coughs> a delta x now we know that average current 
is equal to delta Q divided by delta T, which will be equal to Q N A delta X, all of this divided by delta T. So we will have here delta X over delta T is V. So we will have here N Q V D multiplied by A. This means that the average current is equal to N Q V D multiplied by A. Now V D stands for the drift velocity or the drift speed of the charge carriers. I'm going to explain why it's the drift speed. We know that A, A represents the cross-sectional area, represents the cross-sectional area, and Q is the amount of charge on each charge carrier. This is an important formula. So, so far we have shown that I average is equal to N Q V D A. This equation will show you something mysterious about charged electrons in wires. This means that the charge density, which is going to be equal to I average over A, will just be equal to N Q V D. So this will be the formula for the charge density. It is worthwhile for you to know that the direction of J is same as VD, is the same as VD, or the same as the direction of current in the circuit. Keep that in mind. And you know that the direction of current in the circuit actually is in the opposite direction is in the opposite direction to the flow of electrons. Now observe something. We have shown that, suppose that, let's say we have a conductor. We are going to assume some things, though I'm going to give you figures that are less. Let's say that this conductor contains, they are about 3.0 times 10 to the six electrons um, per unit volume which is way smaller this is really small um, compared to the actual number of electrons it's actually about um, usually 10 to the 20 something but let's just say 10 to the 10 this is still way small um, we know that the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19. Excuse me. Thank you. Let's take the cross-sectional area of the conductor to be 1 meter squared. Let's calculate the drift speed. Now, the drift speed vd will be equal to based on this formula let's say that the amount of current in the circuit i is just um, one ampere it doesn't matter let's even say two amperes so the drift speed is given by i all divided by um that would be NQA NQA this is the same as 2 amperes um, 3.0 times 10 to the 10 multiplied by Q 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by 1 meter squared and if you calculate that usually the, the, uh, the number of let me verify here just to make sure we are using yeah this is usually about the right figures should be 10 to the 24 4 ish so um in that case 
if you simplify this will be 2 over 3 multiply by 10 raised to the power minus 24 minus 19 is pardon so 24 minus 19 is 5 when you when you take it to the numerator it becomes negative so this is meters per second so this is the an approximate drift speed you see how small it is this is very small this is very small so the question is one why is the drift speed so small? Two, why is the drift speed so small? And uh, two, now, Jeremy, let me use you to demonstrate a concept. <laughs> would you mind, please? <laughs> Welcome. I knew you would come. Just come up and let's do something, a demo. Can you put off the switch? You see that when the switch is closed, the light automatically goes off. Now put it on back. When the switch, sorry, when the switch is open, the light automatically goes off. But when the switch is closed, the light automatically comes on. And this is weird given the fact that the drift velocity of electrons is so small. It would take about a century for electrons to complete that circuit to the bulb, but yet it happens instantaneously. Who can explain why? Yes, please. Thank you, Jeremy. You could you could sit. Mm -hmm. you, you feel free to take something to drink. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a correct answer in there, but there is so much information that you've given. But all correct. Now, the reason the lights come on instantaneously is because when the switch is closed, all the electrons under the influence of that potential difference move at once. You understand that, right? All the electrons under the influence of that potential difference move as one at the same time move in uh, influence at the same time so they all starts moving it's like a pipe full with water now when you apply pressure at one end all the water in the pipe move at the same time you understand that right this explains why lights come on instantaneously but then why is the drift speed so small this is a potential question that um, you should be able to answer before your AP exam. Now, but what is drift speed? Let's talk about drift speed. Now, the drift speed actually is is a velocity forced on the charge carriers by the applied potential difference is the is a velocity forced on the charge carriers um, by the applied potential difference the average drift speed is about 10 to the minus 5 meters per second which is really very very small now the reason why the drift speed is very small is because of atomic interference atomic interference i'm going to explain what that means now the path of atoms in a given material is not straight we know that every material is made up of what? Atoms. And these atoms are always in the state of vibrations as long as the temperature of that material is above absolute zero. 
so they are always in the state of vibration which means that the vibrating atoms in turn impeach or block the path of wired electrons so electrons keep colliding with each other and with wired the lattice atoms when they collide they come to a brief stop and then because they are in the presence of an electric field they are still compared to move forward so it's more or less what a zigzag movement you know it's like you are trying to run through a pack of zombies with your hands cut off Wait, what? <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> so they shouldn't grab you and try to eat you <laughs> But then you keep colliding on them, right? When you collide, you stop, you keep moving. Um, so you understand that it's because of atomic collisions between, or it's because of what atomic collisions between the charge carriers and the lattice atoms that causes the drift velocity to be very, very small. If you look at the path of an electron in a circuit, it's not it is not smooth like that this could never happen it's more like that zigzag it's more zigzag reason being that when it is accelerated by the electric field it collides with an atom you understand that right it keeps doing that colliding and accelerating colliding and accelerating so it's more or less drifting from one point to another it's more or less drifting from one point to another and and it's and it is really important that you note that um i'm gonna do something so pay attention please we know that um we know that current electricity current electricity in metals is due to what electrons Current electricity in metals is due to electrons. Now, the electric E, the electric field that compiles the electrons to move, is gonna de is defined as F divided by Q. This means that F is equal to Q E. Now, from Coulomb's this the, from 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 Newton's second law. This will be, this implies that QE will be equal to what? MA. In other words, the acceleration of the charge carriers in an electric field is equal to QE divided by M. This gives you the acceleration of the charge carriers in an electric field. Now, the velocity immediately before the next collision the velocity before the next collision is given by v equal to v naught plus a t this implies that v will be equal to v naught plus bracket q e over m multiplied by t now the average this is the velocity before the collision the drift velocity vd is just gonna be the average of that velocity some people prefer to put the average in brackets like this this means that v drift will be equal to the average of v naught plus this is a constant qe over m multiply by the average time collision time we know that the average of a constant the average of the initial velocity is zero because when the electrons collide they immediately come to work to rest before they move on so therefore the drift velocity will be equal to qe over m multiplied by tau now tau is a fancy letter used to represent average time where tau is the average time between collisions
where tau is the average time between collisions. So if we know this, then the current density will become, look up fellas, then the current density would become, remember it's equal to N Q V D. This will be equal to um, N Q bracket Q E over M multiply by tau which will be equal to n q squared tau all divided by m multiplied by e now the essence of this derivation is to show that the current density has the same direction as the electric field or potential difference in the circuit. 